And welcome back. Uh, time to look at what the papers have to say. The front page filled with very interesting, juicy headlines. Um, but before we do that, Mercy Ebopo is with us this morning. Mercy uh, will take us through the first paper. Um, but Chris Kenny Wando is our guest. Uh, he's already standing by. Chris, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. All right. And of course, uh, I'm not here alone. Mercy Ebopo is with us. And Mercy. Um, <laughs> very interesting headlines coming on the front pages this morning. Which one are we going to start with? Well, I'll start off with the leadership newspaper. Okay. And Chris, thank you so much for staying with us, uh, despite all odds. Uh, the leadership says insecurity may disenfranchise 11 million voters in South East. Quite worrisome. That's a lot. And uh, it's been stated categorically that if urgent action is not taken, then you might probably have 11 million voters uh, not being able to take part in the elections. On the need collection of new 930,000 PVCs in shaky start, seat at home orders, ex stalls exercise in Anambra and Enugu Imo. But, you know, uh, the, the big question a lot of persons are asking is, these persons who are carrying out this action, are they not already declaring themselves, you know, the enemy of the state, an enemy of the state because uh, anything that truncates uh, a democratic process or the election is, 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 is really a threat, a big threat. Ensure they get their PVCs will be charged as security agencies, and these are the riders underneath the caption. I will end hunger, unemployment as president, says Atiku. Question would be how? And you find Aerofight and NAS move to VAT to exclusive lease. I take that again. Move VAT to exclusive lease, pass state please bill. Well, another talks about federal government cancels COVID-19 tests for all travelers. Federal government cancels COVID-19 tests for all travelers. Does it really mean that, you know, we're over with COVID and it's gone? World Cup, Croatia, Argentina locks on for the final sport. And 2023, vote only competent candidate, not an elder still Nigerians. And just before we move away from the leadership newspaper, Tunibu Shatima in Kaduna ahead of Northwest campaign rally. These are some of the headlines. Very interesting on the leadership. Let's go to the nation newspaper. Five killed in attack on another INEC office in Southeast, like we said, in the top trending segment. Undukak Bagman's hypocritical stand, grandstanding on public morality is, uh, a, and I think it should be an opinion piece um, in, the, in the nation newspaper. Uh, very interesting. Uh, we embarking on the media war. I do not know. Uh, he's the publisher of, uh, of this day newspaper and the owner, of course, of uh, Arise TV. Well, the nation is uh, uh, said to belong to a, another uh, family, uh, you know, political family. Let's leave it at that. PDP crisis, Wiki Okoa or Tom in airport drama. Governors in hide and seek, 6.5 billion Naira project inaugurated in Makori. We'll leave it at that on the nation. Well, we have the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, it talks about the ultimatum from the DSS. That's by DSS ultimatum. Petrol scarcity persists in states. Product sells for 310 naira in Kaduna, Kanu, others. Queues ease in Lagos and Abuja. But you, you found that the cost of transportation is still on the high. Marketers seek price control deregulation. DSS begins secret operations. Travel guidelines. Federal government cancels COVID-19 tests and face max wearing. It's fine. Uh, three IPOP members killed in Emo INEC office attack. And please invite NSITF, MD over Forge, NYSC certificates. Uh, some interesting headlines this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. All right. And the final one, the punch will go over that quickly, INEC, PDP. Offices raise scores killed in Southeast uh, Kaduna. Uh, you know, politicians sponsoring attacks on INEC offices, says Zodima. A gunman, soldiers clash in Eboi, uh, soldiers come communities, attack villages, military invades, volatile Kaduna, local government areas, uh, traders, artisans, civil servants flee. 
as gunmen enforcing sit at home invade a uh, market burnt. Uh, as some headlines on the front page, you look at more as we go on, but because of time, let's quickly bring in Chris Kane, the one who is already standing by. Chris, uh, we'll start with this situation in, in uh, uh, Emo State and uh, the Annex office race. We've looked at pictures and looked at that story already on our, our earlier segments. What are your thoughts on this? Because this is not just Emo State. We're hearing that. Um, Scores have been killed generally in the southeast since uh, some sort of sit at home uh, was was declared. Uh, of course, you know about the whole back and forth between uh, <laughs> leading figures in IPOB about whether sit at home is authentic or not. So, what are your thoughts on this? Zanek is now on the receiving end uh, of, of some of these attacks. The governor of Imo State, like the paper said, says uh, politicians are sponsoring the attacks. It's a very uh, sad uh, narrative um, coming from my state of view. Uh, I uh, woke up yesterday to that uh, bomb uh, attack at INEC office, and uh, later we saw some pictures on social media, um, some alleged perpetrators of that act, uh, also the killing of this man. And uh, that is quite unfortunate. This is just coming a few days after the uh, chairman of INEC. And, um, and INEC officials during a, a meeting with the senior media executive uh, uh, cried out over the incessant attack on their facilities in the, and their offices. And there was one in uh, that was underway state, and there have been attacks in some part of um, Southeast. So that coming yesterday was a, a, a big shock again. But uh, it's only but uh, raises the question and and um, also might be a, a kind of uh, insight on what's going to happen in 2023. And I hope that our security agencies are on top of the game. Um, the governor, my governor, Governor Hopus Adema, was too quick to uh, accuse uh, politicians um, of being behind it. If he's aware of the politicians, why is he not naming them? That, to me, was very, very hasty. And the worrisome part to me is the fact that a uh, few days after some unknown uh, people uh, issued a five-day sit at home um, uh, directive in the southeast, um, iPod came out to wash his hand off that directive and said that Nigerians and Easterners should go about their normal duties. That is an arrest then. But who are those behind this? And I don't want to believe that. It is beyond the security agencies to be able to know those behind it and be able to make sure that they fish them out. Except they, uh, they are telling us that they're handicapped and they don't know what to do or don't know how to go about it. These are not ghosts. These are uh, uh, people living with this, within these communities and within this state. And they attack um, and keep people at will and not being done about it. That to me is not wrong. Let's further, you know, on the leadership, it still talks about this, but in another dimension, the fact that, uh, you know, 11 million voters may be disenfranchised, and that's on the probability. But the clause, you know, or the statement that follows afterwards is that the federal government needs to take an urgent action. Why, uh, you know, does the federal government need to come to this one? We're talking about states that are sovereign, and, you know, they have the state apparatus to um, ensure that everything is in, in place. The federal government controls security, they control the army, they control the police, they control the civil uh, defense. They also control all the security agencies um, that deals with the uh, issue of security. The state practically know next to nothing. The, the governor is more of a damn dog. But I still have to blame our leaders and governors on the southeast. Uh, mostly, the, you can see how, um, to a large extent, well protected the southwest is. And, um, and that is because the Southwest leaders and governors have taken the issue of security very, very seriously. And that is why they, um, they initiated the Amoteco uh, security agent. Uh, mainly there were, uh, in the last few weeks, there were a lot of kidnapping on the Lagos, the Bado Express. I'm sure you heard about that. So many people were picked up. But within this, the governors of the states rose up to the occasion I'm able to put on some kind of joint patrol between Amoteco and um, and the police. I was in in, in Oyo State. I was in Ibadu at the weekend. Let's say I will tell you that maybe after every three kilometers or five kilometers, you will see Amoteco uh, security uh, agents 
um, and also policemen, money that express that that has brought to that brought to totality and has been able to uh, uh, make sure that that level of insecurity along that route has been dealt with. I'm expecting the governors of the southeast to do this, but rather than just doing that, they are just going about blaming politicians and the rest of them. Even the one or one or two that have been come up with uh, a bubago, which is a bunny state. You see why how the government of the state are using it, that security agents, uh, those security agencies to be fighting and arresting opposition leaders. That is all they are for. They are not doing what they're supposed to do. So until the leaders of the Southeast rise up to education and make sure that they need this security in the court, we'll continue to have this. Um, these people that are perpetrating um, this uh, violence, as I said, they are not um, they are not invisible. They are not uh, uh, they are known even within certain communities. And given the necessary uh, information, I'm sure our security agencies uh, can deal with that. Then coming to about uh, the issue of 11 million voters will be disenfranchised. I don't believe that. It was worse during the, before the Anambra election, and the election was held in Anambra without any uh, kind of security challenges. And I'm sure that our security agencies know what to do. And uh, so that the people of the South will be able to exercise their franchise from February. 2023 during the general election. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, go to the next uh, uh, newspaper. And of course, um, uh, this particular one from Daily Trust makes an interesting read. Uh, we all had the DSS coming up with its ultimatum last week, uh, 48 hours. And uh, from investigations by Daily Trust, they say in the scarcity persists. And people are <laughs> even paying more now for the product. <clears throat> for instance, in, excuse me, in Kaduna State, in Kano State, where they say uh, the product sells for, that's petrol now, sells for 310 naira per liter. Though in some parts of Lagos, we've seen the queues ease in Abuja, the paper says the investigation has showed, but it persists. It's the DSS finally, you know, showing Nigerians it's a toothless bulldog. What that news broke, I, I, I laughed to buy it. It, was, it, it. it is laughable. DSS, what would they do about petroleum? Is that their job? Is it the job of DSS to be running after uh, oil marketers? We are now talking about the issue of security challenges in Imo State and Southeast. What have the DSS done about it? I think they should focus more on the issue of internal security. They are our secret, uh, secret police. And I believe they have a lot on their table and they have a lot on their, uh, on their desk to be run after petroleum or petroleum marketers. Despite the optimism that was given by DSS, of the issue of petroleum scarcity is is not just about it's not about force or going about how many people can you deploy how many filling stations do we have in nigeria how many numbers of the tss officers do we have i think they should focus on their core uh, mandates um the issue we, we, we know where the problem is coming from everybody knows it is marketers and reporters and the problem we're having is that nmpc imports over 90 percent of the petroleum product in Nigeria. So if there's any scarcity, it's an piece that needs to be blamed. The marketer has said that ease of this um, this importation, very central bank also do the need by making sure that uh, dollars are made available for us, give us um, license to import most of these products instead of depending on NNPC. If anything happens to the NNPC um, importation or the value chain within the oil sector, definitely it affects us. And that is, a, don't forget, this is also Christmas period. Uh, it's always come uh, at this point in time. But the most important aspect is that we should be looking at why our um, uh, our refineries are not working, despite all the promises made in 2015 that we're going to revive uh, the re refineries and build more. Not a single refinery has been built. I think that area is where the SSC, in case they're interested, they should be looking at how the money that was pumped into reviving our refineries we are spent. That are just running after and just in shadows, I, uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense. If you like, let it give us more from now to 20 years, nothing will happen. They have no capacity to be able to make sure that this first scarcity is uh, is redressed. Uh, we are praying that Dangote Petroleum uh, will come on stream and will start pumping fuel in Nigeria. But that in itself is, has the challenges of monopoly. That means that when Dangote sneezes, all of us will catch cold interesting analogy right there um the leadership away from that the leadership talks about uh the issue of vat and of course uh state policing the de decentralizing uh powers to the unit 
That's according to the demand or appeal made by the Kaduna State, you know, Governor Nasser Erufai, asking that not, uh, the, the National Assembly should consider, you know, moving uh, VAT from the exclusive list. Right. Don't you think that we're already, this is, this particular issue, uh, it's like a, a broken record? Yes, it is. Don't forget that Amwike uh, already uh, won some cases in court over the issue of exclusivity of VAT, and uh, he won at the high court. I know that some states, like Lagos, joined that suit. Uh, I don't know where that suit is, as whether it's a of appeal or Supreme Court. And uh, I think they were asked to maintain status quo, and um, we we're waiting for the judgment. It has been said time and time number that the issue of VAT should be a bit decentralized. The way a man the federal government is feeling about it and collecting tax um, exclusively on certain uh, issues and certain products uh, does not give room for the kind of uh, uh, system that we suppose that you come to Lagos, you collect um, almost um, 60 to 70 percent of VAT from Lagos, and you now distribute amongst 35 other states. And even states that are not, you collect um, alcoholic VAT from states like Lagos, Rivers, and other states that allow alcohol. And the states that refuse and say that they don't, uh, especially in the north, that refuse uh, alcohol, uh, that whenever they see um, uh, vehicles moving with beer into the north, they uh, arrest those vehicles, break the bottles, damage everything, but they end up also collecting VAT uh, from those alcoholic people. That to me is, uh, uh, doesn't make any sense. So uh, the, the case is already in court, and I hope that the Supreme Court should as quickly as possible be able to. Um, give a judgment on that so that we can have some level of, uh, uh, the, uh, I, I don't know how to put it, so that we can have some kind of uh, uh, a, a judgment that will stand the test of time. We are still to be able to collect the VAT, and if they have to remit to the federal government, they remit a certain percentage to the federal government. The way it is, it is not looking good. And you know that most of the states are really struggling based on the fact that they are not making enough from the IGR. Even the oil that they depend on going to Abuja every, uh, every month to collect uh, returns is not looking good. Um, we are not exporting as much as we are. The pipelines are being vandalized on a daily basis. We are losing at, at least about 400,000 barrels of um, crude oil to oil tap every, uh, every day. Those are areas that the federal government will be looking at and trying to see how to nip that in the ball so that we can be able to make more uh, from sales of oil and other products that we should be looking at, we're looking at talking about agriculture, we're looking at uh, other minerals and the rest of them. But the issue of that, as it is, is more treated to the federal government. And that is also what we're talking about, uh, allocation, other allocation. We have this, the federal government has about 51%, and they're leaving about, um, close to about, uh, maybe about 40 or so percent to 36 states and FCT. That in itself is not what we a true federalism. There's no way the Nigerian system can be able to suffer under that kind of... And that is why you see that development is not treated as a state in local government in Nigeria. All right, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, uh, so we have some more time. I was about to, to round it off. But so let's look at uh, a few more stories. Um, uh, I mean, uh, the situation uh, in the uh, the PDP is, is really, really a, a serious one. The drama between... Uh, uh, what we hear is Okoa and Wiki avoiding themselves uh, in in the uh, Makodi airport where they both went to campaign. The nation uh, puts it this way on its front page. PDP crisis, Wiki Okoa, Otomin airport drama. I've read a bit of that story and it seems that the gentlemen ha were in the airport at the same time. Uh, Wiki was um, going there to commission some projects, I think, for the uh, Benue State Governor, uh, who is a part of the, the G5 group of governors, and uh, Okoa was there as part of um, the PDP campaign trail. These are all both members of the same party, history well documented. Uh, it's reported that the Ifa Okoa reportedly avoided uh, Wiki at the airport in Makodi, uh, the Benue State capital. Um, the PDP drama is going to new heights. Um, this is just one of the the scenarios that we've been seeing your, your thoughts on what's been playing out so far i believe with time they'll sort it out it's politics uh, one day is too long uh, a day when it comes to politics and uh, it, it, it's it, you'll be shocked 
Now, within 24 hours, you will be surprised by what will happen. Um, we here have said that it's not looking to be the has no issue with Atiku. That his only issue is with the chairman of the national chairman of the party. And uh, he's going to canvass uh, for, the, for the PDP, but he's silent on who to vote for during the presidential election. So he's frustrated for directing on that. And uh, let's say that hard downs up. Uh, what happened in Makuji uh, is still part of politics, as I said. Um, Bukowa, uh, what's his name? Uh, Governor Tom was at the airport to receive um, uh, Wiki and uh, Okowa landed and they met with uh, Okowa and then they spoke. Then Wiki landed and they drove up. Uh, they didn't wait for Tiku to land. Tiku land and uh, they moved to their campaign. But to me, this is just discussion um, uh, tuned from the PDP and I hope that they, they can see reason. We have barely less than 80 days to the presidential election and the earlier they put their hearts together, they put their hearts together, the better for them. I've always said that APC is more vulnerable than it was in 2015. Right. And uh, if PDP or the party were able to put their hearts together, Cr probably Chris, I'm being to finish yeah. the presidency in 2023. Well, I'm, be, I'm being told that we have to go, but just quickly, in, in a second, it has to do with COVID-19 and the fact that the federal government has cancelled, you know, all the travel guidelines, no uh, max wearing. Uh, that's on the Daily Trust, by the way. Uh, do you think that, you know, we're done with COVID? COVID has, you know, disappeared globally. I wonder why this is taking too long. Let's say I've traveled to several parts of Europe. In the past few months, and uh, uh, and uh, the issue of COVID has, is a is a long done issue. They don't they don't ask you to put on masks when you enter aeroplane or wash your hands and uh, do sanitizer. You don't do that. In Europe. And it's just one not one country. One or two of the countries have been to the past few months. Uh, it's Nigeria that we are still uh, try to blah blah do. If you, if you get into the airport, you see somebody sending a, a nose mask of. Uh, 100 naira selling to you at 500 naira uh, just before your entry and the rest of them. But it's good that uh, this in itself will boost uh, uh, tourism and our aviation industry that is practically on its knee. So there's no big deal with it. I don't think that uh, COVID is long gone. It's only in China now they're having issues. And you know, see the protests going on in China where they're even trying to put on some restriction. Their people are vehemently protesting against it. So it's a welcome development that is overdue. All right, Chris, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to having you again next week. And, uh, of course, I wish you a fantastic day. Thank you very much. I do have a nice day ahead. All right. Uh, that's a much you can take with that uh, segment on The Breakfast. But still ahead, we'll be looking, of course, at Google, who has released uh, the list of most search words on uh, the search engine in Nigeria and around the world. It's quite interesting findings. We'll have uh, someone from Google West Africa on the program to talk about it with us in a few seconds. Stay with us.